It's again a very similar way. You introduce task start, I'm doing some data parallel work, and then task end. And what happens is basically on the timeline, it allows me to see these markers, and I can zoom into these markers and see the boundaries where these frames and tasks are happening. In addition to this, of course, uh, we combine V2 performance analyzer, dual product, the thread profiler into one, and uh, we talked about it in detail yesterday. But basically, V2 amplifier XC allowed us to do thread focused analysis, and we can see how the threads are running. You can see CPU time, and CPU time is actually here the aggregated CPU time. So, because each thread is consuming some CPU time, and total CPU time is the aggregated CPU time from each thread. And here you can see the wait time by utilization. So again, you see the yellow uh, and the green. Basically, this is telling me I am waiting, <coughs> but while I am waiting, this particular thread is waiting because this each line is showing a thread. Actually, the other threads were running. So I wasn't blocking most of the time other threads. So you can see, you know, here you have OK, meaning, you know, if this is on a, a six core, like, uh, like the summary showed, on a six core machine, Three, uh, three, two, let's say four or five threads running at the same time would be okay. Five to eight would be ideal. So while this particular thread was running this long, you know, there's like probably three or four other threads were running at the same time. So it wasn't really blocking everything. And the green part shows actually most of them were running. So it gives you quite good idea how other threads are being impacted by a given thread. Okay. Here, on the timeline, I see my threads. I don't see them, I hide them for the moment. And uh, here you see actually nothing but yellow. And this yellow is simply showing me the transition. There are so many transition and synchronization happening for, I, and I'm looking at from the 80 seconds to 160 seconds. And this blue actually are showing, are, are my frame markers. And it's showing me there are so many transitions happening and I cannot simply see, if I simply turn on the transition, I can see nothing but yellow. And when you look at here on this time segment, you can see the, how the frame rate is changing. And in this range, actually, you have some slow frames, again, here and here. So you can quickly identify which time ranges you are encountering this uh, slow frame or low thread concurrency. The beauty of this tool is you can always highlight in a region and then zoom in into any particular area. So if I simply highlight that three seconds, I can zoom in and I can see more detail in a finer granularity when the threads are waiting. This light green is showing me where the threads are waiting, dark greens are where they're running, and you can see in a more detail which thread is talking to which thread and how they're running, how they're synchronizing. So you can do really dive deep to understand what is happening. And other thing is when once you start going down I and mean, uh, deep into the uh, timeline, what, what you see is you can start seeing the boundaries of the frame. So you can see the frame boundaries here. You can see, okay, there's a frame, frame, frame. And if you highlight the frames, you can see what number of that, which number of frame is that, when it started, and then uh, if it's a slow, fast, or good for it. So you can get this kind of categorization very quickly. So here I see, okay, my frame rate went down. I highlight that frame and see, okay, that frame basically was 1098, and uh, it took basically, that frame rate was 21 seconds, uh, uh, frame per second, basically. Okay, so we use basically the V2 amplifier XC in a great, great extent, simply not really diving into microarchitectural part, but mostly staying at the application <coughs> and algorithmic tuning part. We looked into hotspot, concurrency analysis, frame analysis, and we were able to do a great deal and uh, optimization. So basically, the total war game engine achieved realistic user experience, increased fidelity of the visual experience, and of course, greater animation, while of course, keeping the CPU utilization lower compared to previous game engines. What basically, yeah, customization of individual details in this game engine was made possible by the many multi-trading techniques we have used or they use as they, you know, because they implemented it. And there are many techniques for implementing or leveraging them, but in the simplest case, basically they split the whole engine into two parts, the logic and the rendering, 
And then they split those uh, two functional domains into mini tasks. So within logic, you had these little sub mini tasks, and within rendering, you had mini tasks. And then they simply executed this mini task. <coughs> and one of the goals is, of course, no one process or threads holds up another, and the game can take advantage of, of, uh, advantage of available resources. Of course, what did it allow? Uh, basic, this game engine allowed uh, basically more battlefields and uh, naval encounters being more really uh, heavily populated because you can put more units and individuals or soldiers or ships or you know whatever you can, and you can actually animate each individual unit more actively and realistically. Basically, in this game, you can find close to 10,000, 20,000 men in a battlefield and each actually acting its uh, you know by its own and you know while you know you see this in a battlefield uh, you know the army and each moving in a different fashion and basically it was allowed by this uh, leveraging this mini task and multi technique uh, multi threading techniques so if you go back to this you know, when we did the analysis, I mean, this is how we do the optimization and analysis of the threads, and this is where it is right now. Does anybody, can anybody guess what kind of techniques they might have used, or methodologies for parallel programming? I mean, if you can think of parallel programming methodologies, any guess? No guess? Basically, I give you the hints, like they split into logic and rendering, and renderings were then split down into these mini tasks. Basically, what they have done is they, they use these mini tasks and assign and basically spawn this task and let the trading building uh, blocks runtime take care of these tasks. And of course, uh, they right now is, and uh, this is one of the game engines taking and leveraging trading <coughs> building blocks. And we mentioned other ISPs like. Adobe or DreamWorks, and there are many others out there who are leveraging it heavily because it's really powerful uh, trading runtime library. So you have seen the slides, and I'm not going to go too much into detail, but it's a basically again a C++ runtime library, and uh, basically it allows you to scale the number of hardware threads, and it say it gives you a lot of powerful powerful APIs for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Since it is open source versions available too, there are of course other soft, uh, the community has ported that to other <clears throat> operating systems like FreeBSD, Solaris, and there were a couple of years ago basically uh, some game companies took the challenge and they ported to Xbox, there are a couple of game titles, uh, official game titles using trading building blocks. And actually the other, like a couple of weeks ago I encountered a case in a totally different domain, I was working with one of the uh, telecom companies and they said they ported to the network processor, Calvium, and they said we ported trading building blocks to Calvium and we are using it on Calvium. So it was very interesting, a different domain than where we are used to see TDD. So, of course, the advantages is many, but the uh, trading building blocks allows you load balancing through task scaling and it uses the cache efficiently and the memory. And most importantly, it gives you the OS compiler and the platform uh, processor independent. Uh, it, it is agnostic from these particular pieces. 